November 17th, 2018. This video is called California is Suffocating from the Wildfires. Now, I don't think anybody realizes this because I don't think everybody's kind of talking in radiation here, but on this earth.nullschool.net, I was just checking this out the other day. They have a carbon monoxide concentration at surface, right? But that's what this is right here. If you go over here, this is going to be carbon dioxide. This is carbon monoxide. Now, th this is kind of scary. And I think people might be choking, people might be nauseating, and people are getting sick from these fires now. And it's not from just the the soot, which is bad enough, but the carbon monoxide concentrations are ridiculous. They're dangerous, actually. Now, this is on the 10th, which is a week ago. Now, I don't know, this is around San Fran, this is the Bay Area here, so I don't know exactly what city this is. This is down by Los Angeles, so if you look at these levels here, we're almost like in this area in here, and I clicked on it, and these are parts per million. This is 21 parts per million of carbon monoxide concentration at the surface. Now, I'm going to go through some of the numbers here. And this is a very large area of carbon monoxide. This is a huge area. And even down here. Now, if we go to what's going on now, I wanted to go back it up because these... Around this day, it was some of the worst. This might have been when the fires were just starting. I'm not sure, but let's do a present. And right now, you could see it's uh, dissipated a bit. But up in this area here now, see, it actually looks like it might have moved. This might be another fire coming up here. Now, this is four parts. Now, I just want to go back to where it had 23 parts, and I want to show you now the PB, the PPBV is parts per billion volume. Now, these are symptoms of depending on carbon, the level of carbon. Monoxide, the length of exposure, you may experience any one or more of the followings. Headaches, dizziness, weakness, clumsiness, nausea, vomiting, irregular heartbeats, chest pain, hearing loss, blurry vision, and more. It happens when the fuel does not burn fully. Carbon monoxide poisoning can cause brain damage, death, because it's odorless, tasteless, colorless it's known as the silent killer here's the safe parts per million level now remember we were reading at 23 most people will not experience any symptoms from prolonged exposure to co levels of approximately 1 to 70 parts per million but some heart patients have experienced an increase in chest pain as the levels increase and remain above 70, symptoms become more noticeable, which can include fatigue, headache, nausea. On average, exposures at 100 parts per million or greater is dangerous to human health. The OSHA limits long-term workplace exposure limits to less than 50 parts per million averaged over an 8-hour period. So over an eight-hour period, no more than 50 parts per million. This large of an area, you are not going to be running from.
or escaping. Look at that huge area on the 14th. Those, are, look at this, that's, let's see here, 16, 23, look at that, there's 23 parts per million. That was on the 14th. There's 42. I had to butt in here real quick because I missed that 42 parts per million. So that's a big number, 42. So like I said, it could have been higher a little bit if you cruised in there. But as I was watching this, editing it, I see that I missed the 42. So it was at 42 parts per million, which at a maximum of 35, um, one hour exposure, those people were uh they all fell asleep unfortunately that's 28 and i bet you if you messed around and got in here you because this looks pretty dark but it's not so we end up getting 28 for a high and look at on the eighth there's nothing No, there was, it looks like a little something down there earlier. But look, at it wasn't until the 8th when those fires started. On the 9th. So, th like I said, this is a large area at the time. People were getting poisoned. Because over here it says how much CO parts per million is dangerous. The U.S. standards for CO levels are as followed. Remember, we were hitting, I think it was, 20, we'll say it was 24. Maximum of 35 parts per million of CO for a one-hour exposure. Not to be exceeded more than once a year. So in a one-hour exposure... The max is 35 parts per million. So those people were bumming whoever's around that area. Hopefully that was out in the mountains or something. But the ones down in Los Angeles, those definitely, those people were breathing it. Maximum of 9 parts per million of CO for 8-hour exposure. Maximum of 9 parts per million for an 8-hour exposure. So we were at 23. Not to be exceeded more than once per year. Carbon monoxide is odorless, colorless, deadly gas. Deadly. So let's go back to today. And let's see. Hopefully this fire is going to burn out. Let's see what the future is they're predicting. And it only goes to the 21st, but it looks like... On the 21st, they're calling it that it's still going to be burning. Down in L.A., it, all that stuff kind of burned up already. Malibu, when we see the, the total extent of the area of damage and destruction. So this fire looks like it's out, but it looks like there's still um, carbon monoxide hanging around over here. Like, as opposed to if you were, like, over here, you're not even... One, and then boom. All right, this is not good. I found this California fire tracker, and I kind of put two and two together here. For some reason, this just came to me. And I'm thinking, this is the campfire right here. And if you, it shows that this is the perimeter. It's still burning. But I, what I just realized is this is paradise where the whole city went up and a thousand people are still missing, I guess. And when I think about it, those what we're, we're those levels we were reading here when that happened,
I'm thinking those people couldn't leave because they were overcome with the carbon monoxide. And not only that, I haven't even, I'm not even going to go into the carbon dioxide levels, which is 642 parts per million. So these people were dealing with particulate matter, heat, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, the heat, the smoke. Because I was wondering, I'm like, hey, yeah, I hope that was in the mountains, but this fire here is the fire of that went through paradise and it's still it's still burning it shows right here it says the current fire perimeter is right here it's still moving and i have a feeling that those people that are missing they couldn't leave because they were the symptoms of carbon monoxide poisoning is it just creeps up on you they probably just got fatigued and they it was harder to get away because of all these chemicals they were being bombarded with it, it just is hor- it sounds more and more horrible when i think about it with the amount of carbon monoxide concentrations at the surface are a third of what would kill you literally kill you at 100 parts per million And these people couldn't run. Look at this swath of carbon monoxide. That's the fire right there. They're showing... Another fire down here, which I'm wondering if it's this this piece right here. This website is called Projects. SF Chronicle. This is must be the San Francisco Chronicle. Looks like there's a lot of ongoing fires everywhere. We're in trouble. Well, that's been contained. These are the active ones then. It's uh, 78% contained. Campfire is only 50% contained. That thing is going to be raging. It already went through 150,000 acres. What is air quality data? Okay. They have the data right here, but they don't warn you when you have uh, deadly carbon monoxide levels. All right, I'm going to end on this note right here because this video can go on forever because I can just keep finding more and more stuff. Now, I just went to the current air monitoring data, the Bay Area air quality. Check this out. This is the air quality for San Francisco right now. And according to this, it's, it's uh, between unhealthy for sensitive groups unhealthy and very unhealthy and it's only one point away of hazardous and the reason why i say that this is ridiculous because look at this is san francisco which is down over here let me see if this is on the present 
Okay, okay, here's the present. All that stuff is coming down. You could see where it's coming down, and it, unfortunately, it's coming down through San Francisco, but San Francisco is right in through this area. This, exactly. Look at this area here is what they're picking up right in here. The air quality is very unhealthy. I would agree with them. Up here, then yeah, even, and this isn't as dark as before. Look at this. It's only pushing about five parts per million. And you can see how dark this is compared to where uh, San Francisco is. And San Francisco is a very unhealthy this up in here is beyond hazardous. It's probably, it is. It's probably right in this area, which is deadly, over 500. And I would say, according to this color up in here, this fire is spitting out it's even deadly carbon monoxide. Like I said, look at this whole damn state. You're suffocating from the wildfires in California, and you don't even realize it. This is the national high resolution smoke model and you can see what's going on in California, Oregon, here in eastern Washington and it's blowing smoke clear across the continent even into the Canadian Maritimes. can't smell the smoke at sea level, but we can see it above us. It's not blue skies. The light from the sun and the moon turned orange. Then came September, and it wasn't just smoke. It was ash. The wildfires worst in the history. And there are hundreds of firefighters trying to control the flames. But of course, the effects even more far reaching. Millions of people are feeling the effects in the air quality right now. It's among the worst in the world. irritating eyes, their throat is sore, they can't breathe properly. Uh, and part of it is thinking about, you know, let's say we're sitting around a campfire. You know, when you have a really good fire, yes. everything burns beautifully. There's yes. no smoke, right? Because everything gets converted into carbon dioxide and water. But when you see this white stuff coming out, basically there are intermediate breakdown products. So you're not burning this thing cleanly. And so that's what we're breathing in and feeling all of these side effects. So we're talking about an air quality health index as being a 10 plus. Now that's a scale that normally goes up to 10. So what is this? What is exactly being measured and what does that mean? Yeah, so normally we're measuring sort of exhaust from cars and things like that. So they're looking at uh, nitrogen dioxide, which is bad for your health. They're looking for um, ozone down at the ground level and then these particulate matters that are very small, 2.5 micrometers. Just to give you an idea, um, your hair is about 30 times larger than that. So really? these are the things that we're going to be breathing tiny. in. Okay. So they looked at those three things because they're linked to health problems down the road. So that's why they gave us a scale and it's normally we sit between zero and three which is where you can do whatever you want outside. When you get to this 10, they don't want you to go outside at all. And a 10 plus, meaning that you're off the scale, so to speak, and that's when we're gonna have all these horrible effects. So what are the effects? What are, at least short term, what are we talking about the health risks right now? Yeah, short term, very simple. You get irritated eyes, itchy eyes. You might get a sort of plugged up nose. You might have a sore throat. 
For people with asthma, this is when they get into trouble because the lungs become twitchy and they constrict and now they can't breathe. For people with lung disease, so for example, COPD, or we call mm -hmm. smoker's lungs, mm -hmm. they can't breathe because their lung is damaged, so then now they're having difficulty. So in the emergency rooms, they're seeing a lot of those people coming in, uh, basically not able to breathe. If you have heart disease, if I can't get oxygen into you because the air is so thick, then your heart is not gonna get all the oxygen that it needs, so you might have more heart disease. Okay. And in terms of children, that's another group that we think about, their lung to their body ratio is pretty big. Like they have lots of lung, I guess if you will, and they breathe quicker. So therefore, all these particles will go in and cause them problems similarly with the elderly. So this is short term, as you've said, in this way, but there's no indication these fires are going to be extinguished anytime soon. They need a massive amount of rain. I'm thinking also about the firefighters who are exposed to all of this smoke for a prolonged period of time. Long term, what do we have to be concerned about? And that's the important thing is because a lot of these gases disappear, but that smoke that's going up that you see from the satellite images, those are those small particles, these tiny little things that are going to get deep down into your lung. This is the cloud that's sort of spreading across the country. And the firefighters are breathing that in as well. And when they looked at them, let's say year after year after Fort McMurray, for example, they're following them up right now. They noticed that they continue to have coughing and inflammation in their lungs. So in other words, they're not getting better. Remember when the Twin Towers came down and there was all that fine particles that the first rescuers got and they're still having lung problems. So now as we follow people out, uh, I think we're going to see that they have chronic problems down the road.